15% of the US population suffer from sleep apnea, but most of them don't know it. It's a big problem because sleep apnea leads to daytime sleepiness, lack of concentration, cognitive deficits, morning headaches, and their sleep is often interrupted because they start choking or gasping. Left untreated, it does cause high blood pressure. It's associated with heart disease, kidney disease, type 2 diabetes, and even fatty liver. It's vital then to figure out if you're part of the 15% that have sleep apnea, and then how to treat it, because sleep apnea, it destroys longevity. Sleep apnea is where the airway gets blocked, and there are periods of time where you're not breathing. It causes blood oxygen levels to plummet, and blood pressure to skyrocket. And the body thinks that it's under massive attack, so it activates the fight or flight response, also known as the sympathetic nervous system. Therefore, boosting heart rate, the stress hormone cortisol, and overall inflammation levels. In short, it's metabolically terrible for the body, and it starts to affect your day-to-day -day activities. If you're sleepy, suffering from a headache, and unable to concentrate, are you really going to go for that run or practice those good diet habits? Patients that I see in the clinic, they start to go through this downward spiral. And even if you manage to motivate yourself, how much easier would it be to maintain a healthy lifestyle if you were feeling energized, if you were waking up feeling excited for the day? How much better would your relationships be with your friends and family? And all of that ties into health span and longevity. So how do you know if you've got sleep apnea? Because some people, they are so used to feeling tired that it's become their new normal. And it's only once sleep apnea is fixed that they suddenly have a new lease on life. Well, with the patients that I see in the clinic when I'm suspecting sleep apnea, I use the Stop Bang questionnaire. It's made up of eight yes or no questions. So I ask patients, are they snoring? Do they feel tired? Has anyone actually witnessed that they've stopped breathing at night? What's their blood pressure? Body mass index? age, neck circumference, and gender. If my patient scores three or more on that list, they've got a high likelihood of suffering from sleep apnea. And if patients aren't sure if they snore, I often encourage them to use a sleep app that records their sleeping habits. And it's a very quick questionnaire that most likely you'll be able to do yourself at home. Then we move into confirming the diagnosis. The gold standard is an overnight sleep study where oxygen and CO2 levels are measured, as well as blood pressure, heart rate, and breathing rate. It's a very expensive procedure to do though, which is why I often recommend to my patients to do an at-home sleep study. These are monitors that can be rented for one or two nights and give us fantastic information to help on our journey to correctly diagnosing sleep apnea. So once we've got the correct diagnosis, now we need to treat it. And we always start with lifestyle. Often patients who suffer from sleep apnea, they are not exercising and they're overweight. And we know from multiple studies that weight loss does reduce sleep apnea rates. Like we went through though, if people are feeling tired, it can be incredibly difficult to lose that weight and to go out for that run. So yes, I always encourage my patients to eat a great diet and to try and exercise. But there's a few other things that I also recommend because again, we're trying to break that downward spiral so that patients are actually feeling energized to go out for that run and to eat that healthy diet. So I then talk with my patients about sleep position. Often when patients lie on their back, it makes sleep apnea worse. The tongue can go back and block the airway. So if patients sleep on their side, they often have much more restful sleep. And there are different devices to help encourage patients to sleep on their side. The next, and this may sound obvious, but it's to avoid alcohol. Alcohol depresses the nervous system. It exacerbates sleep apnea, and it often makes daytime sleepiness worse. And if I see a patient who's on sleeping medications, that's one of the first things that needs to go. Again, the sleep medications, they often make sleep apnea worse. Next on the list is mouth appliance. So what we're trying to do is make sure that the airway stays open. We want to stop the tongue from blocking the airway. There are different appliances that help move the jaw forward or hold the tongue in a more forward position. And on that point, some people have got a very large soft palate at the back of their throat that flops back when they sleep and blocks the airway. So sometimes surgery is indicated for those people. But the most important device that helps with sleep apnea is using CPAP machines or continuous positive airway pressure. There's high High quality evidence from many different trials showing that positive airway pressure, it does improve sleep quality, reduces blood pressure, improves things like erectile dysfunction, and overall improves quality of life. And since these machines, they lower blood pressure and improve oxygen levels at night, it was hoped that these machines would lower 
cardiovascular disease or heart attacks. Interestingly though, a massive 2016 trial showed that CPAP machines did not prevent heart attacks. But for me, that's not why I'm excited about using these devices or other strategies. What I'm hoping to do is improve the quality of life of my patients and make them feel more energized. And when they've got their energy levels back, I find that they're far more likely to go for that run, to join the gym, to practice those healthy diet habits. That way it gives them a far better chance to lose weight and to become metabolically healthy. Overall, many people don't know that they're suffering from sleep apnea, that their tiredness levels have become their new normal, and it's only when these fixes are applied that they suddenly have a new lease on life. With all these strategies that we've gone through, we can effectively treat sleep apnea and encourage patients to exercise and to eat that healthy diet. Sleep apnea is so often overlooked and it destroys patients' health span and longevity. Let's fix that. And make sure to check out this video here where we have a look at the research around the best diet for longevity.